The WIT Plus AXC Energy Storage System is a robust GrowWatt solution for C&I scenarios. It has flexible configuration and deployment capabilities, provides safe and reliable system and smart management. WIT 29.950K XHU C&I hybrid inverters cover power ranging from 29.9 kW to 50 kW. As a robust C&I hybrid inverter, WIT 29.950K XHU inverter has various functions capable of fulfilling multiple application scenarios. WIT XHU inverter can be compatible with AXC C&I battery system and installed as an indoors rack. The solution supports connecting up to three AXC racks to a single WIT XHU inverter, covering battery capacity ranging from 30 to 180 kilowatt hours. The inverter can be applied in single systems as well as parallel systems to extend the system capacity when installed outdoors to ensure optimal performance and long service life of WIT XHU inverters. It is best to avoid direct sunlight, rain and snow, and to install an awning over the unit. The WIT inverter can be installed vertically or backward tilted with a small lango. Please reserve enough clearance around the WIT inverter to ensure sufficient space for heat dissipation and operation. Here is the installation layout requirement for the WIT plus AXE system. A maximum of three racks can be configured in parallel and the racks can be mounted side by side with no gap in between. In addition, please make sure there is enough space for maintenance access. Before installation, we need to prepare installation tools. Here is all the equipment needed in the installation of WIT XHU inverter and AXE commercial battery. Unpack the inverter and take out all the items. After unpacking the WIT XHU inverter, check if the scope of delivery is intact and complete. Refer to this table in the manual and check the following items. Notice, please read user manuals carefully before installation. Only qualified and well-trained technicians are allowed to install and operate the WIT XHU inverter. There is a handle on each side of the inverter. At least the three persons are needed to lift the inverter out of the package and transport it to the installation position. As the weight of the inverter is not evenly distributed, please keep your balance when you move it. WIT XHU inverters are well mounted. We need to install the wall mount bracket before installing the inverter. First, assemble the wall mount bracket. Use the wall mount bracket as the template to determine the location of the holes on the wall. Then drill holes into the wall with an impact drill. And insert the expansion bolts. Hammer them into the wall. Tighten the expansion screws to secure them to the wall. Hang the wall mount bracket on the expansion screws. Tighten the bolts to attach the wall mount bracket onto the wall. Ensure the bracket has been firmly installed before mounting the inverter onto it. It is recommended to hand the inverter with a rope for wall mounting. Please ensure the rope is strong enough to carry the weight of the inverter. After mounting the inverter onto the wall mount bracket, install the bolts and tighten them. Please check if the inverter has been properly mounted and tighten all screws after wall mounting. It is essential to connect the ground cable to the WIT inverter before connecting other cables to prevent personal injury or device damage. Before starting wiring the inverter, make sure it is safely and firmly grounded. The grounding point is on the two sides of the inverter, as the figure shows. Bound cable to the ground point on the chassis shelf. For a system with multiple WIT inverters connected in parallel, ensure that the grounding point of the enclosures of the WIT XHU inverters. The metal racks of the PV modules and the batteries should be connected to the same area to achieve equipotential bonding. Depending on the size of the battery system capacity you choose, we offer two different sizes of battery racks. They can carry battery modules up to 9 45 kilowatt hours or 12 60 kilowatt hours. In this video, 
we use a high rack as an example. After unpacking an AXE battery system, check if the scope of delivery is intact and complete. Refer to this table in the manual and check the following items. Install horizontal frames on left frame or right frame. Please make sure that the side-up node refers to the same direction for both frames. Then assemble left and right frame, tighten the screws. Reinforce the frame with diagonal support. Tighten the foot mount and assemble it to the rack. If the rack is not stable, the foot mount can be adjusted to keep the rack stable. Please note the correct orientation of the rack. When moving the equipment with a forklift, secure it properly according to the actual situation to avoid tip-overs. Do not transport racks with batteries. Grounding the rack before installing the battery in high-voltage box. The control module can be installed at the top or the bottom of the rack. We take bottom routing as an example in this video. This photo shows cables which are delivered with high-voltage box. Please confirm. Push the high voltage box into the bottom of the rack. Tighten the screws to secure it. Each battery module is individually wrapped. Unpack the battery to start the battery system installation. Each battery module comes with cables and a warranty certification. A tool is provided to help you remove the batteries from the package. Install a dust-proof net behind the battery module each time before installation. Lift the battery module to the height of the corresponding slot with a lifting trolley. Then push the battery module into the rack. Tighten the screws to secure each battery module after it has been installed in the rack. Remove the right cover plate to start the AC terminal wiring. Before wiring, check the following AC terminals behind the cover plate. The radius circuit breaker and power cable specifications are illustrated in the table. Please choose the appropriate breaker or cable according to the inverter model. Before connecting cables, ensure that the DC switches on the WIT inverter are off. Turn off the switches and breakers on the grid side, gen side, and the battery side. Otherwise, the high voltage of the WIT inverter may result in electric shocks. Cut holes in the pad according to the outer diameter of the cables to route them through. After routing through the cables, determine the cable strip length based on the specifications of the terminals. 18 to 22 millimeters is recommended. Crimp the cables and the terminals. First, connect ground cable to the copper grinding bar inside the right cover plate. Then connect the AC cables of the load port. Please notice the number of grounding cables to be connected should not be less than the number of AC port sets to be connected to the system the AC cable to the load port. Connect the AC cable to the grid port. The gen port supports connecting to generator, AC coupled PV inverter or smart load. If gen port is to be connected, make sure the real set grounding cable is connected first. BMC AC terminal provides AC power to your battery system. Please connect the cable as required. Check the position of BMS AC terminal before wiring. Assemble the BMS AC terminal and cable as shown. Then connect the BMS AC cable to the terminal. We recommend that you perform this step before connecting the other AC cables in case of tight AC terminal entrance.
After connecting the AC side cables, apply fireproof mud to the waterproof silicone mat at the inlet side. Then reinstall the right cover and tighten the screws. Here shows the terminals on the bottom of WIT inverter, including PV terminals, battery input terminals, communication terminals, and AC ports. Please confirm them before wiring. The rated AC power cable specifications are illustrated in table. Please choose appropriate cable according to the table. Strap 6 to 8 mm of the insulation layer of the DC cables. Insert the exposed core wires into the crimping area of the wiring terminal and crimp them using a crimping plier. Route the cable through the cable sealing sleeve and insert the insulation sleeve until it snaps. Then tighten the locking nut. Insert the positive and negative connectors of the PV modules to the corresponding terminals of the inverter. A click sound will be heard when the terminal is connected. Please gently pull the PV cable back to make sure it is securely connected. Control module wiring position and diagram are shown as this figure. In battery module wiring position and diagram are shown as this figure. Connect the negative terminal of the top battery to the CMS B negative terminal. Connect the positive terminal of battery to CMS B positive terminal. Then connect the series power cables and communication cables between the batteries as shown. When connecting the terminals, ensure that you hear a click sound. Please gently pull back the cables to ensure a secure connection. And install the signal shorting cap. The WIT-XHU battery junction box is an optional accessory. WIT-XHU series inverter has three battery inputs. Each input support charging, discharging current up to 55 amperes. If the inverter is to be connected to one cluster of battery system of which charging and discharging current is higher than 55 amperes. The junction box could be applied to provide larger charging and discharging current. Here is an introduction of how it should be installed and wired. Before wiring, please check the terminal on the bottom of junction box as shown in the photo. We have reserved a battery terminal for third-party battery. Please use it when required. The battery junction box can be mounted on the inverter. Please ensure it is firmly installed. Remove the cover plate and protection cover of junction box. Connect the tap line to the junction box. Then connect the battery cables to the junction box and tighten the protective cover. After wiring, install the cover plate. Before connecting the battery cables, secure the battery terminal anti-dismantle element onto the inverter using the screws. Route the battery cables through the battery terminal anti-dismantle element and insert it into the inverter. When connecting the terminals, ensure that you hear a click sound. Please gently pull back the battery cables to ensure a secure connection. Then secure the anti-dismantle element to the inverter. The COM1 terminal of the WIT29.950K-XHU inverter includes 9 RJ45 ports. It is used for parallel connection via para-in and para-out communication terminals, battery communication via BMS1, BMS2, and BMS3 terminals, and external equipment communication via RS485 and DRMS function. The pin definitions of COM1 port are as illustrated. In the video, we connect one communication cable as an example. Please connect the communication cables to the corresponding terminals as required.
First, remove the fixing screws and disassemble the COM1 waterproof cover. Then lead the cable into the holes in the cable gland. The five hole fastening rings inside the cable gland are with openings on the side. Please separate the gap with hand and squeeze the cables into the holes from the side openings. Hole diameter 5.5 to 7 millimeters. Route the cables through the COM1 terminal waterproof cover. Connect the cable to the WIT inverter. Then tighten the COM1 terminal cover and secure the screw. Connect the power cable, BMSAC cable, and communication cable to the high voltage box. The position of COM2 terminal is as illustrated. The COM2 terminal is used for generator startup, generator stop and emergency stop. Crep COM2 cable as the figure shows. The COM2 communication terminal contains two dry contacts. Voltage free, pin 1 and 2 are for emergency stop signal. Pin 3 and 4 are for generator startup and stop signal. Connect the COM2 cable to the COM2 terminal on the inverter. The default data logger to be used with WIT inverters is Shine YLAN X2. Loosen the waterproof cover of the USB interface and remove it. Insert the YLAN X2 module into the USB interface. Make sure that the triangle mark is facing frontwards as the inverter has been wall mounted. Insert the monitoring module into the USB interface and tighten the lock. After installation, please refer to the table in the user manual and check each item. Then turn on the DC switches. Turn on the breaker between the grid and the inverter. Test the voltage between BAT positive and BAT negative with a multimeter. Turn on the HVC's DC switch. After completing the above steps, the system will be powered on automatically when all the requirements are met.